What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Captain Price with Captain Price Reacts. And today we gonna be watching Gideon. Why I deleted all my videos. So if you're new to the channel, go ahead and like, subscribe, turn on notifications. I said like, subscribe, turn on notifications. And let's go ahead and get into this video. I don't know what's going on. Okay, okay, okay. There you go. You said you wasn't gonna bother me. Remember you said that? Here we go, sit down. There. This is all that's left. One, two, three. Shh, shh. Let's go to the second channel. This is all that's left. Let's go on the third channel. I'm not gonna lie. If he trying to do a giveaway with one of his, with all his channels, you know, you feel me, you, you feel me, Jenny, you trying to do a giveaway, you feel me, let me enter that if you doing a giveaway, it's like nah. I did. Yo, what's good, YouTube man? It's your boy Gideon, aka Gideon, aka Demarcus Cousins the Third, aka I don't know what other names I have, but I know I have a lot. I know a lot of you guys thought my last video was gonna be my last video, and I thought that as well. But with the big change, as you guys can see on the channel, I felt like I owe you guys an explanation. I scourged the earth of all Gideon content and i know a lot of you guys are gonna be mad bro i mean my dms were whew, i had a lot of mean <laughs> comments in my dms about me just saying how i'm stopping making content so the fact that i took away the content i can only imagine how mad a lot of you guys would be but this explanation isn't for the people that are mad this is for people that are confused for the people wondering and i feel like you guys deserve a clear very clear and detailed reason why did you delete all your videos, Julian? I would say the main thing that people have hit me with since I've given my life back to Christ is why can't you follow Christ and make content? I mean, you're over here making millions upon millions of people happy. Isn't that of God? Isn't it a godly thing to put a smile on people's faces and to make them happy? And while bringing happiness to the world is of God, you can also bring happiness to the world through wickedness. You can bring happiness to the world by serving the devil, you know? Not all happiness is from God. And I know for a fact, you know, there's no Christian in the right mind that can make the case to say that the content that I was making was of God. And I'm not gonna even try to make that case, you know? And you know, if I'm gonna truly give my life over to God, I gotta also take out the wickedness that I put into the world. So, why did I delete all of my prank videos? Well, let's look up the definition of the word prank, and then let's hop into the scriptures and see what God thinks about prank. Because he actually did say some things about there. I didn't even know he about did. them. Brother Josh showed me, but God did say some things about pranks. So this is from CollinsDictionary.com. Prank, a noun, a mischievous trick or joke, especially one in which something is done rather than said. If you do a trick on somebody, you have to deceive them. And we all know who is the master and the king of deception. That's Satan himself. So... Every time that I'm doing a prank or doing a prank on a person, I am literally practicing what the master prankster himself, Satan, did. Ah, uh, you're dragging it, you're stretching it, but I'm going to show you guys. Just stick with me. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 26 and start at verse 18. Like a madman who throws flaming darts and deadly arrows, so is the person who deceives his neighbor and says... I was only joking. So Solomon is comparing playing practical jokes on people in the name of good fun as a madman shooting flaming arrows in the air. So basically he's saying a person that goes around pranking people is the same type of energy of a madman just going around killing people. And when you look at my content, bro, it's really not far off. I mean, I did a lot of crazy stuff in my videos. But the one thing I think that haunts me the most is one of my most popular pranks was, was whenever I stuck into the Gatorade HQ and I deceived the security guards and lied and said that I was working there and that I was part of the commercial team. And I got the prank done, got millions of views off of it, so many people giving me props. But what a lot of you guys don't know is three people lost their jobs because of me. Because I lied and was saying that I worked there I got three security officers fired. 
that had been working there for years, all because I wanted to play a practical joke, all because I wanted to entertain you guys. And that's evil. That truly is evil. And to those people that I got fired, um, I'm sorry. I truly am. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 23, it says, It is a sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. King Solomon, the most wisest man to ever live, is saying right here that a person that just does mischief for fun is a fool. And that's, that's how I made my bread and butter, is I just like to do mischief for fun. And when you actually look at the word prank, a similar or synonym word for it is mischief. So mischief and prank mean the same thing. But once I truly submitted myself to Jesus Christ, once I truly started reading his word, I got wisdom and I got understanding. And, you know, with this understanding, I will be a fool to go back into my old ways and keep on causing mischief, keep on pranking people, keep on ruining people's day just for my financial gain. I'll be a fool to do that. And not only would I be a fool, but I would be evil, especially with this understanding that I have. If I want to call myself a child of God, I gotta conduct myself like a child of God. Can't be lukewarm out here, you know? Can't be half for the world and half for God. God wants all of us, not just half of us. And so when I came to that realization, that was the catalyst of me knowing that I was gonna have to stop doing pranks and eventually wipe as much as I could off the internet. I'm gonna stop him right there. You know why I put it on pause? It's because you got a lot of reaction channels out here that sat there, and including myself, have sat there and reacted to a lot of your videos. So with what will go on is like, now it's about to be like, what's gonna happen is I put money that most of the people that has reaction channels like myself, we're probably gonna get red flagged. <laughs> Even flight, everybody probably gonna get flagged for them to get their stuff taken down. You know, so hopefully he don't do that. You know, you know that I posted out there in Ephesians chapter five, starting at verse three. Paul says, "But sexual immorality and any impurity or greed should not even be heard of among you, as proper for saints. Obscene and foolish talking or crude joking are not suitable, but rather giving." Thanks. Paul's letting us know right here, we shouldn't be saying dirty jokes or sexual innuendos or anything like that. And if you've been a subscriber for me long enough, you know, <laughs> that's all I was about. Like literally, that was all I was about. And I mean, for prime example, all I would do would just make sus or sexual jokes. What you guys do? Oh, we're doing Pornhub right now. Who? Pornhub. Oh, fuck. I'm putting me on a Pornhub, would you? You got some hot ladies? Huh? No, dudes. Oh, fuck. Bro, why are you arching like that? You gotta arch your back. Bro, why are you arching? Bro, it's an arm move. What the fuck? Hold on to me tight. <laughs> Say, buy Italy's new album on three. I'm gonna meet Glizzler my whole life, so instead of gobbling me, I wanna gobble, you know, some eggplants and stuff. Yeah, when you put it that way, I know exactly what you mean. I would make merch hinting at homosexuality. Leave the store now. Like, we can kiss, like, I'm down. Dude, stop filming now. Bro, I I'm down. We can Call kiss. Call League City, please, please. It's not gay, it's homosexual. And I would make merch promoting fornication and unprotected sex. Huh? What's a raw dog? No hot dog bun in the bedroom. I have this sort of thing where I don't like condoms and I don't use them. Well, you put it on and then tuck it off. Because I'm a professional raw dog. <laughs> and he basically gave me like a big shout out on national TV. And I was like, bro, I'm going to pull up to you. Or you had Xavier. How long would you say you were a professional raw dogger for? Uh, since I lost my virginity. And when did you lose your virginity? Yeah, 16. 16? So you went on like a good little stretch, but then you slipped up. Time out. So, Bella. Set. Time out. A true statement and a true statement only. When he get more into the Bible, raw dogging ain't 
a sin that is actually a good thing. It's just having sex without marriage is a sin. So it's like at the end of the day, you don't post to have you don't you don't post to use rubbers. Everything is natural. Rubbers is something that man created. God didn't create that. Man created that. Man created that so they could, just like birth control and all this stuff, everything should be natural at the end of the day. No birth control, no nothing. It's just make sure you don't have any accidents, you know. So at the end of the day, that's not a sin. It's just having sex before marriage is a sin. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm doing a little walk myself. People don't realize it, but you know you got it. At the end of the day, I feel like you gotta build up to be that person that you want. Like, don't get me wrong. I be in the Bible sometimes. You know, I pray every night. But at the end of the day, I'm sorry. At the end of the day, raw dogging is not a sin. They it, it wasn't condoms all the time. Remember that. That ain't a sin right there. The homosexuality is though. You look that up, that it really is. I don't have no problem. I got cousins that's trans and all that. I don't have no problem that that is in the original Bible. There's a lot of things that that they promote and propagate on TV and stuff that's in the, that says don't do in the Bible. You know? Now they're washing the Bible. They didn't wash the Bible down so many times. You got to really find a real one, a real Bible. It's just like finding a real, being in a real relationship, being a, finding a real man or woman. I'm trying to tell you, at the end of the day, everything get washed down. And in the world, everything gets washed down. I'm gonna have to demote you to amateur raw dogger status. You know, you're the first ever person I demoted. And I would literally have kids always run up to me to this day, still. Just the other day, I had a kid come up to me. Could have been more than 13, 14 years old, telling me, oh, I'm a professional raw dogger. Oh, I'm a professional raw dogger. And now with these new set of eyes, I just know as an influencer, I felt this generation horribly, you know? I did not contribute for the positive. I contributed for... Another thing. I don't care you teenager or not. You're not saving a teenager from having sex. I'm trying to tell you. When they get that age, you could try your best to prolong it. You got some people that's pro didn't prolong it. I didn't prolong it till 17. I got friends that still are a virgin, you know? I got friends that don't have sex rant with random chicks. I got friends that, you know, all types of, I have a, all types of walk of life of friends. So it's like, at the end of the day, you can't really protect the kids from, they're going to find that out through family, friends. And this, this bef before television was television. People was having, doing that at 12. In the 18 and 1700s. And beforehand. You look at Egyptian culture. They was doing it. King Tut was having kids. At like. That. He was deformed. You hear me saying? Like they was having kids. Awful and awful. So it was like. Kids. As, as we used to, I forgot what culture used to celebrate. Used to celebrate when a man and a woman come, a, a girl and a boy comes into their manhood, meaning like pube hit puberty. But yeah, somebody say that in the comments, yeah, I see it. The negative, I contributed for the enemy. And so to all the youngins and even the older people who I influenced with my jokes and my perverted thoughts, I'm sorry. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 26, Paul says, Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. And y'all, <laughs> that was my bread and butter. Like, my bread and butter was provoking people. Like, I was so good at it. I knew how to press people's buttons. Stop touching the paper. 
tickle, tickle. Oh! Get back! Are you not for this? I don't think you are. Y'all yeah, look famous. Walk away. You need to move before I like break this shit. We're not doing that. Oh, you look famous. Walk Who away. are you? I'm with the Hollywood okay. Fit. We see the cops right here, so if you would like us to get them on you, we can definitely do uh, that. We're working. Walk away. Walk away. Can I please? Can you hook me up, bro? We good, bro? I just want my size 13, man. If you good, I'm good. I don't record me, dog. I take the camera and I smash that shit. That wouldn't be cool, bro. I don't care. I don't care. I told y'all stop fucking with my business and y'all came back again today after I already told y'all yesterday. And granted, that wasn't always my intention going out filming. I'm not going to lie on myself. But whenever I would do that, I would get a feeling inside just knowing, oh, I just got a banger video because this dude lost his cool for a couple seconds because I was provoking him. I just profited millions of views off of that. And while I'm getting admiration from millions of people, this dude's about to be humiliated in front of millions of people. And I really didn't care, you know? As long as it furthered my goal, as long as it furthered my career, like, I could really care less. And the numbers back me. I mean, look at my content. Every video where it was someone getting angry or someone getting in my face, those are my most viewed videos because <laughs> when you provoke people and when you get people out of their element, when you get people in a spirit of rage, it gets views. And I would profit off of that. And I was teaching younger kids that were looking up to me, this is how you blow up, this is how you get big, by provoking people, by making people just trying to do their day or work their job, by getting them angry because you're doing what you're not supposed to. And so to everybody that I ever provoked in my videos, to everybody that I embarrassed and humiliated in front of millions of people, I'm truly sorry. What's up, y'all? We can take a picture? Yeah, of course, man. You know, it's about to come a time that people gonna be like, who is Jitty Young? Because he did what he did. And I'm like, who is this guy? How y'all boys doing? Doing Making my last video. Last? My last one. For real? Yo. God bless. Stay of course. Stay safe. Y'all too. Y'all too. <laughs> this is my last point right here. The world is in for trouble because of the way it causes people to sin. There will always be something to cause people to sin, but anyone who does this will be in for trouble. So basically what Christ is saying right here is the world is already in trouble because there's sin in it, but there's gonna be even more trouble for the people that are causing people to sin. The influence that I have, I know for a fact, I've seen it. I've caused a lot of people to sin. Verse eight, if your hand or foot causes you to sin, chop it off, throw it away. You will be better off to go into life crippled or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into fire that never goes out. If your eye causes you to sin, poke it out and get rid of it. You will be better off to go into life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fires of hell. So Christ isn't being literal here when he's telling us to chop off our arms or to poke out our eyes if they're causing us to sin. What he's saying is, whatever it is that's causing us to sin, we need to cut it out of our life. And a lot of you guys got this message. I've gotten so many messages from supporters saying that they stopped watching me because of the content that I was making because they wanted to get closer with Jesus. And to all you guys that cut me off, I applaud you. I really applaud you. I got nothing but respect, and I love you for cutting me off. Thank you. And for the ones of you that came back to me, I appreciate you guys for coming back, you know? Now you guys can watch some good content, but this is for the ones of you who won't cut me off. These are for the ones of you that love me for the way I was. I can't be the way I was anymore, and I won't ever be the way I was anymore. So... If you won't cut me off from you, then I need to cut myself off from you. So that's why I deleted all my videos. I don't wanna be the stumbling block in your way no more. I don't wanna be the reason why you keep on living in sin. I don't wanna be a hindrance from keeping you from the kingdom of God, no longer. So that's why all my content is gone. And that's why I'll never come back. 
And while I know we made a lot of good memories, and I know a lot of my content wasn't quote unquote that bad, I'm gonna just get rid of all of it. It's all gone. I'll never be seen again. Because I love you guys. And to answer the question, why did Jadeon delete all his videos? I deleted it because of you. That's why I deleted it. I love you guys that much. Even though I haven't met all of you guys, even though I don't know all of you guys, I love you that much. That's the reason why I deleted all my content. So that hopefully one day you can all repent and turn to our one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So yeah, y'all. This is my last video. No more ever going to be posted again. Unless you guys come to my new channel on Gideon, where it's only Christian content. But until next time, peace. Love you guys. See you never. So, I have a playlist with Gideon stuff. So, if you're new to the channel, go ahead, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'll see y'all in the next video.